But when you're in ballroom, it's a lot more that goes into it. And there's a lot more that's like, you know, underground. What categories do you normally walk? Performance, face, and realness. Performance is voguing. Face is face. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. And realness is when you can pass as a woman born a woman. People and the egos and the things that they, they feel like they fab because they in the scene and people praise them. And a lot of them, they leave the scene and they have nothing. Seven students at a North Jersey high school have been suspended after the assault of a 14-year-old transgender student. So you got hate crime. To me, like I kind of look at things from other people's perspective. I really want to make it out of this. There's so much more people that need to see me. My best friend is Honey Balenciaga. Like at 20 years old, having your best friend be kind of launched into the stardom. We're all chasing a dream, but it's like, who's really gonna get there? I can't wait till I blow up, blast, bloom, explosion In my late 20s trying to get the circle rolling I'm working all these others, jumping hard, just feeling frozen Sub-zero, hard, cold, a feeling heated, happy, low But I Hello, hello Do you mind if I turn the camera on you? Yes! Hi, Matt We made it I'm okay. here I know, good to see you Thanks for having me Thank over coming Yes, you smell good Thank you The hike up through stairs And then I be in heels and stuff all the time So I go through worst things <laughs> Oh, I love your place. You. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. <gasps> nice. This is Barbie's official room. This is Barbie's room. I'm always here and there, so like I'm telling you, I probably stay here like two times out of the week. Is this weird? <laughs> I know. I okay, first take with Barbie. This is wild to me. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. A million times I've been saying that, like, I'm just so happy to be here. I literally remember the DM when you sent me, you're like, I've been watching the show, and I was like, oh my, finally, Barbie has yes. found my show. I love when people that, you know, I feel like are blazing their own trail in our community mm -hmm. resonate with my show and then want to be part of it. I think you're the youngest person I've ever had on my show. Legend. Because <laughs> you're 20. Yeah, I'm 20. I just look at you as so much older, but I think that's just because you've been really like, blazing your way for a while now. Yeah, usually when people meet me, they're like, oh, you're like my little sister. And I'm like, you see, you thought I was like mother, but I'm actually sister. Because <laughs> how long have you been kind of infiltrating yourself into the club scene, into the ballroom scene? Probably when I was like 17, I started going to like the clubs and the, and the ballroom scene and stuff like that. But as far as just being in ballroom, like since I was 15. My mom knew you were coming over, so she said, you know what? I gotta get it together. <laughs> this is my mom's room. Oh, nice. Oh, it's like a living room slash yeah, bedroom. Uh huh. We broke that up and was like, you know what? I go over here, you go over here. You know what? Before I turn 21 years old, I want to make sure that I go into being 21, a young, grown lady, you know, with something on her chest. You, you look know? great. Thank you. So how do you feel getting them, like, afterwards? Like, would... um, I feel like, honestly, as far as my parents go and everything, I'm, like, the happiest that I've ever been. Really? Mm -hmm. I feel I feel confident. Yes. I mean, yeah. rightfully so. You're absolutely mm -hmm. stunning. Thank you. You're a real-life Barbie doll. That's what they all say. Baby, the only girl in NYC that could ever hold that name. New on Action News, seven students at a North Jersey high school have been suspended after the assault of a 14-year-old transgender student. Her mother believes she was targeted because of her gender identity, but some students say she may share some of the blame. So I was in school, I was ignorant, I was trans, I was a kitten, and I ended up making a video in the hallway, filling it on Snapchat with my girls, and one of the boys was like, Oh, like, you know, like cat calling me or whatever. And I was like, he don't know that I'm trans. That's what I said in the video. And I posted it. I don't know what I found funny about that. I came back to school and I was going to homeroom and I heard in exact words by a girl, that's the me. there she is. I turned my back before I could even turn my head. Boom. I feel that she's not the victim because she posted something on Snapchat and the boy seen it. He did not know she was transgender. He thought she was a female. And then people started talking to him about it. Yes. And he felt embarrassed. Yes. He took it upon himself. It wasn't my fault. I never forced anybody to say anything. Yeah. If he's insecure about his feelings, the people calling him gay around this building, it's not my problem. It's not my fault. That's his. I look back at it and I'm like, I can't even blame myself for that because I was a young trans person with no experience, had no guidance of other trans women. So you got hate crime. I feel like people watching this will look at me like, girl, it is a hate crime. But to me, like, I kind of look at things from other people's perspective. And I feel like I understand why somebody like him, regardless of how he handles it, could, would feel so 
embarrassed by other people who are probably kikiing at him or you know what I'm saying like that's a real thing and I feel like people trans people everyone in the community they tend to not like remember that those other people who do harmful things do those things out of embarrassment out of fear out of although you know and you just handle things how you handle things yeah but but it was wrong and it should have never happened to me but so you were saying you kind of take a little bit of the blame because you were tricking him supposedly like not saying you're trans and then kind of making a joke about it on camera that he didn't know you were trans yeah i just think that that was so unnecessary of me to like that for me to do i I see trans women now all over the internet you know what i'm saying that they do these things like i don't know just trying to take away from their woman because i feel like that is taking away from your woman you're walking around oh i'm 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 this i'm that like girl you know that people are looking at you like you're crazy, right? It's like a weird balance because you do want to let people know you're trans because you don't want to place yourself in an unsa- unsafe right. situation like you were in. Right. It's, it, maybe for you is a good like learning lesson, Definitely. you know, at a young age to kind of be like, this is how I need to handle myself in order to keep myself safe. Mm-hmm. Now I just, I move differently. Like when I'm on the train, I can care less about who thinks I'm pretty, who thinks I'm not. Like, you know, when I had got jumped and I was on the news, all the people that were in ballroom that I never knew about found out about me. They didn't know who I was. And then those people were involved in ballroom and you know i just caught my ear in there and i was like oh no they said here they said there i have to go but i didn't they didn't want me to be in ballroom you know what i'm saying they didn't really want they wanted me to stay away from ballroom which is something that i understand now that i've gotten older and have experienced ballroom you know it's a safe place and it might seem like a safer place to the people that are watching but when you're in ballroom it's a lot more that goes into it and there's a lot more that's like you know underground it's like what do you mean by that so it's not a very supportive <laughs> environment or what do you mean it's it's it's, it's just a supportive environment when you're grown and you look good but i feel like when you're a young trans woman and like you're finding yourself i feel like you will end up finding yourself through other people and not like really through yourself the girls in the scene make you feel like you need to have this you need to have that like it's not safe mentally for a lot of people like i w- it was times when i first came into the scene that i felt like i needed to look and be a certain way i'm so excited to be here with you you're an icon no you and are everybody knows this but like you're just amazing everything about you is amazing thank you so you're such a sweet person so you come here all the time yeah well i actually am ta- i've been taking a break but i'm back now and it just feels so good to be here like i always come just to let out some frustrations like i really look at this just as like a playground what categories do you normally walk performance face and realness performance is voguing face is face that's right and, that's right. and um Realness is when you can pass as a woman, born a woman. Does the face category, like, is it based off how pretty you are? Uh, yeah. That's you so interesting. Walk if you're not, if you're not, you know, your your skin is not good. You don't have nice teeth. You know what I'm saying? Those things are very important. And ballroom is like one of them places that when it comes down to these categories, if you don't have it, you don't have it, and they don't apologize for letting you, you know, letting you get up that walk of shame with that chop, baby. It's like so interesting because in the modern day, I feel like it's so like you couldn't say that to somebody. You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah. ballroom, like you can. And it's totally accepted and understood. Like you know, I've I've never gotten chops. Never, ever, ever. Oh, look at this face, baby. I can't. But I definitely have um, had my things in ballroom where, like, you know, the shade has been intense. And it doesn't matter who, you know, no girlfriends, no, no, we're no, we don't keep key when we're on that floor, you know? I had this one experience when I first came in the scene. And I was, like, 16 years old. 16. And I was here in Jersey. And somebody, a legend in the in the, in the Jersey scene, you lucky I don't shade you right now and let them know your tea. But, see, why we had a practice, and they, I literally remember them telling me, like, you would never make it anywhere in this scene. Like, nobody would ever live for you. Like, and mind you, this is me with, with no blonde hair, with my little brown bob. And, like, I look at it years later, and I'm like, you was really telling a 16-year-old little kid that they would never make it in this scene and stuff like that. Like, those are the things that I'm talking about in ballroom that's, like, the people and the egos and the things that they, they feel like they fab because they in the scene that people praise them. And a lot of them, they leave the scene and they have nothing. You know what I mean? And those be the same people reading and down talking young trans women. Like, I think that it's crazy to down talk anybody who's young. But when you're young and trans, I think that that's just like makes it like even worse. Well, it's good that you feel like that because now you're going to be imparting your wisdom on younger people as you get older and you can change that story. I I hope that they are young girls who look at me and like really understand that I want to be that for them. You know what I'm saying? Like young trans women who look at me and they have goals that are bigger than what ballroom tells you you can do and like. You can go wherever you want in life and, you know, just keep going until you make it.
Casey Hook. Casey Hook. I think that he wrote that. Casey. Wait. Casey wrote that. The the guy from the, the designs from Mugler. That's when I got invited to the Mugler Spring Summer Collection. <laughs> what are you laughing it's about? It's so funny because it's like I feel like anybody who's in this world will look at this and be like, Oh girl, why? Why are you saving this? Like, cause they're in it. They're in it. You know, like models that model all the time. They're probably looking at me like she's such a kitten. Like, why is she saving these type of things? We get bags sent up all the time. But it's like, I don't know, I just need these. So I can like look back and be like, they wanted me. I love it. I think it's so important to celebrate your wins because otherwise, like that's what it's all about. And then you're also manifesting it happening again. You know what I yeah. mean? I think it's so cute. I love yeah. that you save this kind of stuff. I really want to make it out of this. You know what I'm saying? And I'm grateful and I'm happy for where, where, where I'm at in life right now. But I just feel like there's so much more people that need to see me and people that need to know that there's more to me than being pretty or whatever. Like, I can do so much more than that. I can do so much more than voguing. I can do so much more than acting. I can do literally whatever. And I have so many amazing people. My best friend is Honey Balenciaga. Like, that's my real best friend. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, the people that are around me, I just feel like we're all chasing a dream. But it's like, who's really going to get there and who's going to take it, you know? Both of you. Both of us, for sure. But there's a there's enough room for everybody. But I just want to make sure that, you know, I get there, get there fast. It's beautiful how supportive you are of your best friend. Because, of course, of course, you're going to be supportive. But at 20 years old, having your best friend be kind of launched into the stardom while you're still, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. trying to get there. Mm -hmm. It, it's really mature of you to be able to just realize how beautiful that is. Oh, yeah. When she wins, I win. Any opportunity she's had without me asking, because I don't ask, but when she, when she has something, she shares a, a percentage of me, even if it's just a little bit. You know, she talks to me about things. She uplifts me. She really has long conversations with me on how I can better myself and do other things to get myself out there. She's fab for being that way with me. It's amazing. That's yeah. a beautiful friendship when you can encourage each other and grow with each other. Mm -hmm. That's a symbol of a great friendship. Yeah. Do you remember when she got the call about Beyonce? Yeah, I was in her house. She was like, girl, I just got a message from the Beyonce people. And I'm like, like, Beyonce, Beyonce. Did she have reps by then or something? Like, does she have, like, agents and stuff? Or how do they find her email? Well, she has people who take care of all that. But, I mean, her following is pretty big and, you know... Like, everybody knows who she is. So it's like, when it comes to voguing, it's no shade to any of the girls in the scene. And I'm talking from legends to icons to new girls. Honey's watching it, she's going to laugh. Because I don't care. That girl is one of the most booked, most known, most loved, most celebrated people in ballroom to this day. She's that girl. She really is. Do you remember when you were six or seven, like what made you feel like you want to start transitioning? I don't even remember the, what it was that, and nothing made me feel that way. I just went with life. Like I never came out to my mother, never. Never told my mom, oh, I'm trans. She literally just let me live my life. When I got to like 15, oh, I got in the ballroom scene and then I started, I had, a, I had a trans mother at the time, a different trans mother, that she gave me my first hormone shot and I was never on hormones. So I was prescribed to, to testosterone blockers when I was that young, but I never was prescribed hormones. And I was coming home with my breasts growing. What'd she say? What's going on? And I was like, girl, the T blocker is like gagging me. <laughs> she was like, no, something else is happening. When I went to my doctor for a checkup for the C blockers, he said, there's hormones in your system. What's going on here? And my mother was gagging and I was like, I've been getting hormone shots from people from my from my from my people. My mom was like, you know, he and her fifty year old child said that they take your hormones injected into their butt by other people. It was like, what? And she gagged. Was she mad? She just was like concerned. She was just like, well, who is this person? Like, how was how do you know that their stuff is legit? How do you know like what made you want to do that? Like, why didn't you know all those questions? It's interesting talking to you because there is so much conversation these days around should kids be given testosterone blockers? Oh, I feel ways about that now that I'm older. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> interesting. So you wait. So you feel like they shouldn't be given blockers i feel like it's just insane that a that a 15 year old little girl can go into a room and say this is or uh, this is what i want and you don't even give them you I, I went in there for my first time and left out with my papers to go get my hormones it's interesting that you say that because i would have assumed your perspective was 
for giving blockers to kids because that, it worked for you and mm-hmm. it made you help you in your transition. I think that it's a it's, it's a way you go about it. You know, taking taking any type of anything injected, anything that you're popping pills. I don't really know about that. I feel like the patch was cute. The patch felt like it was for my age. Fifty year old patch, little sticker on your on your boom boom. Yeah, that worked. Not getting injected with. A needle into your into your behind or into your leg or whatever and taking pills like i don't know i didn't even know how to swallow a pill my so, first pill i'm ever taking is a hormone pill i just have a few of my things here just so i could be reminded you know that i have people who love me and stuff like that so these are just my close things this might be my friends right here is that a real picture that's a real picture that's my real picture from high school oh my gosh it looks almost like painted it's so gorgeous thank you i was painted that night I say I was painted. This is my best friend. This is my one of my close friends, Jalissa. She passed away. Oh no, I'm so, so sorry. Yeah. And of course, people in the bomb scene, it's like, you know, you're here one day, you're not here. Is that to do with them being trans and stuff? Sometimes it has to do with them being trans. Sometimes it has to do with medical problems. You know, some people just, you know, off themselves. Do you find yourself in danger like living in new york or you know being trans and kind of taking the public transportation here and there and they even thought about you and i was taking the train and i mean not that i felt in danger at all but mm-hmm. i was like imagining you at three o'clock in the morning and being 20 yeah and looking the way you look gorgeous and like mm-hmm. you just kind of you shine so mm-hmm. it's like do you ever find yourself like yeah but i have had a lot of times where guys have like tried to follow me home i've had times where you know, they pulled out their private parts. It's been, like, crazy situations like that. I mean, I feel like that just has to do with being a woman in general. Like, you know, we're, like, harassed all the time by men. Yeah, and since you grew up in New York, like, you have you have the New Yorker in you that's, like, the tough energy. Like, Baby, like, I, the- I be sitting on the train, like, I want to fight. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're ready. You're ready. Yeah. Did you grow up with your mom only? Um, yeah, my mom and me for all my life. Is your, and if I'm crossing boundaries, let me know, but is your dad still in the picture? My dad is not in the picture. And yeah, he's not in the picture. He's not. <laughs> Have you ever met him? Yeah, I've met my father a whole bunch of times. But um, like we've we've had we have memories together. When he's around, he does the correct things that I would want him to do. But he never put in effort to be in my life. You know what I'm saying? Like he never put in his own time. He never called when I didn't ask him to call. He like you know him and my mom. We didn't. My, my father lives in New York. My father is a New Yorker. Like New Yorker, New Yorker. Like doesn't do jersey never did jersey and he was over there and mom over here and i just feel like he never put effort to see me and then when i started transitioning he got out of he was in jail for a long time when i was small then he got out of jail when i was probably like seven i want to say i was already up in that like i showed you you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. and there was no problem with it when he came out to my face you know he i even remember him buying me a makeup palette from like the store from a store one time like a little makeup palette and he didn't mind but then it got to a point where i grew up and he and he started to see i feel like he started to see like this is not gonna go anywhere like she's gonna be her and that's just how things are gonna go and it was just a really hard pill to swallow and after that i didn't see him for a very 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 long time my mom definitely took up for all of that time you know like i always say when it's when it's father's day she gets flowers i love that and i i I think your mom sounds like an amazing person. Yeah, she's great. Part of the reason why you and your dad aren't on speaking terms is because of your transition. My transition and also him just not being a great father. You know what I'm saying? Like, I had to come to that thing in my head like, baby, it's not true. It's not about your transition. It's not about any of those things a lot of times. It's really that he's just not a great father. That's life, too. Like, you know, people have kids and they don't even know how to be a parent. The last time that I seen him, he tried to, like, make it up with money and, like, you know, sneaker and those things. Like, I don't care about that. I want a father. You don't want your love to be bought. Yeah. I'm a great person. You know what I'm saying? And the people around me love me and there's people that I don't know that love me and that know about me. And I just think that it's crazy that all these people could and you can't. And you're my father. Do you think he'll enter the picture again? Or how do you feel about letting him back into your life? If he was to watch this video, you know, and realize and call you. Um, mm-mm. Yeah. I don't even know. No, that, and that's fine. You know, I... I think sometimes there's boundaries that need to be happen happen and to make you a healthy, happy person. And if you feel that way, then that's totally okay. Yeah. I think that so often people think like, oh, I have to allow my my dad back into my life because he's my dad. But like, I also think that if it's not right for you, it's not right for you. You're right. 
when my mother is no longer here, I'm only really gonna have myself. You know what I'm saying? That's that's really how I feel. Yeah. That's how I feel. It's just interesting talking with you because, you know, I have talked to a lot of people on the show that maybe don't have good relationships with their parents mm-hmm. or things, but they are all maybe 40 years old, so they're able to, like, they've come to terms with it, but as a 20-year-old, I just wonder how that looks for you. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's, it's like, I guess this is a hard, so it's a, po- a hard swill, a hard pill to swallow. Mm-hmm. I just gag it. Like, it's just crazy. Even talking right now, like, I feel like I'm getting so emotional because I have not really sat there and thought about it like that but yeah i mean you're an amazing person and you you deserve all the love in in the world and uh, you deserve a father to love you for who you are yeah yeah he knows he knows his daughter's a baddie but he has had not you know he needs he needed to take that and uh, you know hold my hand and like Move past that. Thank you. Thank you. It was perfect. You did amazing. Thank you. Yeah, I was so nice. Thank you. Had it fun? Yeah, I had a good time. Did it go how you expected it to go? I went perfect. I was like, yeah, even better than I expected it to go. You did amazing. I went more calm and more natural than I expected. Okay. So, you know, usually when I do it to me, I feel like I'm like, uh huh. It's like, okay, I'm just here with my friend, man. I love it. I love that. I love you. Come love back. You, okay. you have to promise me that if, when you catapult, you'll still, you'll do an update episode on the show. No matter how big you are, you're not going to go MIA on I me. I promise I'm not going to go MIA. We're going to still... What? You're probably going to be go bigger than I am. No. Your channel is doing really good. Thank you. Uh, you guys will see us again. That's right. I'm together. I'm sad it's already over. I'm sad too. It was great. Come back. Okay. Come lay down.